Okay, for the people who have just joined, my name's Lindsay, and I was just explaining that it's very relaxed and laid back um, presentation, and I'm just going to read through what it says. If anyone basically has any questions, you can pop them in the chat. You will also have the opportunity to email them later on as well. And a little disclaimer is we are recording, or we're going to try and record, but because um, it's a screen share, the recording won't be recording anything your names are not going to be recorded, you're not on the recording, it's just my screen and basically my voice. So I'm going to get started. So, supporting parents with expressing. And of course our button doesn't want to work. Right. Auto second if we needed to increase our supply could also be if we're going to believe in our baby or our toddler it could also be if we've got a premature baby or even just to relieve your breasts of engorgement or blocked ducts if your baby's not gaining enough weight and um, we can express as topping up and if you're struggling with latching as well as to donate your milk plus many many more some people express due to medical reasons and some people express purely because it just fits in with their life and that's fine. So how to express. Firstly, um, I picked this little picture just to show everyone that this is colostrum, uh, also known as liquid gold. Um, obviously, I don't know what kind of mums are watching today, whether we've got pregnant mums or if everyone's already had their babies. But this was just to show that colostrum is a different colour to milk, um, your mature milk. And that is completely normal. Um, it's full of antibodies. So how do we express? There's numerous ways we can do it. We can do it by hand. Um, a lot of parents find it expressing by hand is actually one of the ways they can maximise the supply and get more breast milk out. But everyone is completely different and it's individual. Um, using a manual pump, an electric pump, double pumping, which is in the name there, it's both breasts at the same time, and hospital grade pumps, which you could access through your health visitor and also the infant feeding team, as well as hiring them. Um, hmm, the button's not working. Okay. So, to feed your baby your milk. So as we can see in this picture, this little baby is actually being fed through a cup. So syringes, which are good for really, really small babies, and colostrum, because colostrum comes in such tiny amounts, and your baby's tummy is so tiny in the beginning, and your body's really clever at knowing, and colostrum is enough for your baby in the first couple of days. Spoons and cups, again, really good for small quantities. Bottles. Um, I would like to mention that if we're using a mix of breast and bottle feeding, um, paste bottle feeding helps stop bottle preference and nipple confusion, but I must stress it's not suitable for underweight babies or premature babies. An SNS, which is a device um, where you can still feed your baby at the breast, but some of the milk would be coming through a tube and to always seek prof um, professional health advice if you're going to use an SNS. How to get the most out of the expression? Skin to skin, firstly, um, warm compresses, which could be in the form of flannels or some mums like to go for a warm bath or a shower. Circular breast massage and rolling of the nipple, it optimises your oxytocin levels. This one's really, really important. If you were only to do one of these, well, skin to skin and this one would be the ones that we would probably recommend. Um, so I'll go into more detail further on through the presentation, how you do the breast massage. Looking at your baby photos and smelling a baby blanket or, um, or even looking at your baby if your baby's with you. <clears throat> Covering your collection pot. This one sounds really strange, but really does work. So as we all know, stress inhibits your ox oxytocin, which we need to encourage your letdown to happen. So if mum's stressed out watching how much she's 
getting out the pump or even through hand expressing, it can add on pressure, which means your oxytocin won't let down and you won't be able to get as much milk. So we little, a little tip some mums do is they cover their collection pot with a sock and it really does work. Distraction. So a funny movie, again, gets your oxytocin levels rising um, or even music, just anything that can distract you from what you're actually doing. Expressing on one breast while your baby feeds on the other. The reason why this one's really good is because your baby's on one side and stimulating that letdown, which happens in both breasts. So it means when we're expressing, we're working a little bit less. We're not working as hard um, to get them up to flow. Breast compressions. So some mums find if they use breast compressions while expressing at the same time, it can maximise their output. And if you do use a pump, some mums find hand expressing at the end can help just to get a little bit more milk out. And relaxation is key. I just wanted to say that it is important that no one gets a little bit mixed up with what we're expressing out, thinking that that's an indication to our milk supply, as it's not. Um, nothing is as good as your baby's getting your milk out. So how often? So if we're exclusively breastfeeding, at least eight times over a 24 hour period. Um, I've got a wee 10 there because we would say eight to 10 times, um, but also it depends on how old your baby is, how much milk you're getting and so forth. If you're not exclusively breastfeeding, then a little tip, sorry, exclusively expressing, then a little tip is that to stick to a certain time of day, because what happens is your breast milk is um, supply and demand. So that's how when we're approaching a time where your baby needs fed, but you can feel it in your breast that your baby's due a feed is because your body knows um, that it's time to feed. So if you were to want to just express for one feed um, by sticking to a certain time of day, over time, your body would adapt to this and know um, that there was a, a milk feed to be given at that time. And it means that sometimes we can get more um, milk as well. Now this one's not convenient at all. <laughs> so during the night, <laughs> our milk levels peak. Um, so the hormone that's um, the hormone that causes this is prolactin, which is one of the major hormones. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> one of the major hormones. Um, for your milk production and the hormone levels peak between the hours of one and four. So it's really important if you are exclusively um, expressing to make sure you're doing one expressed feed at night. Um, and if we've ever wondered why our babies like to wake up, it's because they can smell the hormones and they know it's time to feed. <laughs> and again, not all mums who are breastfeeding need to express. Um, I realise we're giving quite a lot of information in the presentation and I, if there is any pregnant mums here, I don't want to overwhelm with too much information because sometimes <clears throat> parents can get into toddler hoods without even expressing one feed. Um, it's just basically personal and some people do it medical reasons and some people do it just because they, it fits in with their life or purely because they just need a break. And that's fine. So how to store and defrost your breast milk. I put in here healthy term babies as it's slightly different if your baby um, is premature. So if anybody does have a premature baby, um, you can just contact the email address if you need a little bit more support on that. So first of all, at room temperature, we recommend six hours. In your fridge, we recommend Depending on the temperature of your fridge, this can vary. So if your fridge is between five and 10 Celsius, we would say three days only. Um, and if your fridge is four Celsius or lower, we would say five days. And your freezer, um, which should be 18 Celsius or lower, we say six months. And if your milk hasn't been used in any of these time frames, you need to chuck it out. <laughs> and using defrosted breast milk as soon as it's fully defrosted. So how do we defrost the breast milk? Slowly in the fridge is the ideal way, but it can take quite a lot, quite a lot of time. So we can put it in cool running water and then into warm water. Warm running water, sorry. 
and it's important that we don't microwave breast milk. <clears throat> so I just wanted to mention that if anybody does go to take their milk out the fridge and they start to they notice the milk might look a little bit funny because what can happen is your milk, it's really normal for your fats to separate in your milk and it can give like two layers. Um, and sometimes it can be a little bit scary the first time you see it, but it's completely normal. Um, but if your milk ever sells, smells sour, then we would say don't use it. Hand expression, how to. So clean hands in a sterile container, firstly. Your warm corn presses, um, again, really will help. Your hand massage. So hand massage. So we always work from the top of your breast towards your nipple. So there's different movements. You can stroke with your fingertips. You can tap with your fingertips. You can roll using your knuckles. And you can also try using the pad of your hand and circular movements all towards starting from the back of your breast towards your nipple. OK, so starting to get to the hand expression now. So we make a C shape by placing our thumb above our fingers. I'm going to show a little video at the end of this so that um, you can kind of see it in practice. But I'm not put on that how far back because every mum's different. And it's just a case of playing around to see and experimenting just to see where that ideal spot would be for you. So you would gently press and release your fingers and, uh, and repeat an rhythmic movement. Some mums can find if they press back inwards and back towards their chest wall as they're squeezing can help. Um, but again, it just mentions there that everybody press, um, everybody's spot for squeezing would be slightly different. Now, when the milk starts to flow or stop, a really good way of thinking about it is imagining your nipple like a clock face or around the darker area behind your nipple, your areola. And what to do is if we imagine that's a clock face and we just, once we've done a certain spot and the milk's starting to slow down or stop, we just reposition our fingers and our thumbs all the way around the nipple and expressing again and trying to express all areas of the best. So this is a little video that I'm going to try and share. And I'm going to hope it goes to plan. That was just a little video. Um, I hope some people found useful. Um, the full video is seven minutes long. Um, it's really, really a useful video. So we'll carry on. How can we tell our baby's getting enough milk? Now, this is a question that every mum who is breastfeeding basically wonders. Um, and so yeah. Let's get to it. So your baby has eight or more feeds in a 24 hour period. Now this is breastfeeding and exclusively expressing. Um, we would, you would aim to be expressing for your eight times in the 24 hours. And obviously you might give the baby the milk in bigger quantities and that's fine. So your feeds, this is um, mainly aimed at breastfeeding and um, your feeds are between five and 45 and 40 minutes long each feed. Your baby's calm and content after most feeds. Um, it is normal for your baby to kind of fuss a little bit and actually seem like they want the opposite breast. This does not mean they're not content after their feeds. It's normal baby behaviour. Um, so yeah. Your baby's gaining weight according to their centile. Now, the reason I have health visitor put in brackets is because your health visitor is the one who will be tracking your baby's centile. And if there was anything that was concerning on it, they would let you know. Your baby's having enough wet and dirty diapers for their age. Now, let's look at nappies. We have a beautiful picture here. Um, so, between days one and two, we would have one or more wet nappies. We would have at least one or more dark tar-like nappy as well for dirty. Between days three and four, your wet nappies would be three or four and starting to feel a bit heavier. And your dirty nappies would be looking for about two or more and starting to change in colour. Between day five and six, we would be aiming for about five or more heavy wet nappies. 
and your dirty nappies would be at least two or more starting to turn yellow and could be quite watery from breast milk. If you ever had concerns about your nappies, um, you would obviously speak to someone. Top tips. So the reason why I have this in the tips is because I haven't mentioned transportation for your milk. So your milk is fine if it's kept at fridge temperature for 24 hours. So this could be with ice blocks, etc. If you don't have ice blocks, no more than a maximum of four hours while traveling. And if it smells sour, do not use it. Remember, pumping is a learnt skill and takes practice. It's not an indication in any way to your milk supply. Your babies are much more efficient at removing your milk. So how do we stop? How do we stop expressing? So it's much the same as it's stopping breastfeeding as well. So it's best done gradually to give you time to adjust and avoid any block ducts, etc. So there's different ways we can do it. So you can gradually shorten your pumping sessions or you could carefully, no stress, carefully, please drop a session every two to three, two to seven days. Oh, sorry, three to seven days. <laughs> um, paying real good attention to how your breasts are feeling the full time. Anytime you're feeling any engorgement, please look after yourself. Gradually, you could increase the time between your sessions also. Um, when I mentioned looking for engorge, um, looking for any engorgement, block ducts appearing. If this does happen to happen, um, expressing to stay comfortable doesn't mean that you're telling your body that you don't need less milk because we're not removing a full feed. So the minute we start to feel tender, sore, a little bit engorged, getting a little bit hand expressing or even using your pump a little bit will help to take off the pressure, it doesn't mean we're saying we need that full feed so your body will still get the message. And lastly, I would just like to thank everyone for attending and any questions anyone might have, you could email them to ayrshire at breastfeedingnetwork.org.uk.